Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give the God the highest praise, the highest praise, which is hallelujah. Thank the Lord that we have made it to the last month of the year. So many people didn't make it to the last month of the year, but God has allowed us to be here on tonight. Today is December the 6th, 2022, and I want to give honor to Bishop Briscoe and First Lady Briscoe. To Elder Russell and his beautiful wife, Minister Latasha Slade, to all of the ministerial staff and to the officials and the entire household of faith, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight, and I want to give honor to those who are watching via social media as well. I am thankful for the opportunities that the bishop gives us in using this platform to grow, and we should never take it lightly. So can you please turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 9, and I'll be reading verses 17 through 22, and I'll be reading it from the NIV version. When you have it, say amen. I only hear one, one amen. 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 Thank you. And the Bible reads, a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Amen. Father God, I pray that I decrease, that you may increase, and that the word blesses the ears and hearts that will hear it and receive it on tonight in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I want to speak to you tonight from the topic, how long will you be muted? I love how Jesus asked certain questions to the boy's father. For an example, how long has he been like this? The father answered, from childhood. Now we don't know the exact age of the boy, but to have dealt with anything from childhood can be a long time. What we do know is, that in John chapter 10, verse 10, in the NLT version, it says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. It didn't say steal or kill or destroy. It said steal and kill and destroy. That is the enemy's purpose, which means that is his goal. That is all that he desires to do. The enemy doesn't come at you for you just to have a flat tire or for your water heater to burst or for you to have a bad hair day. No, he doesn't. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I believe that the reason why the enemy robbed the boy here in Mark chapter 9 of his speech first is because the enemy needed him to be silent. I want you to look at your life and ask yourself, has the enemy taken your voice? Has the enemy muted you? If we understand how the enemy operates, we will see that the enemy robbed this boy of his speech because maybe God instilled in the boy something for him to say. The enemy doesn't mind you speaking foolishness for him but what he doesn't want you to do is to get saved and be a mouthpiece for Jesus. Amen. In Mark chapter 9, verses, 22, verses 25, 
In the NLT version, it says, when Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak, he said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. For Jesus to say never return, that lets us know that there were seasons in this boy's life where the spirit of mute was there and it lay dormant. The father said in verse 18, and whenever, the word whenever, this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. It was like the boy was a puppet and the enemy had control over him that whenever the boy wanted to say something, the spirit would rise up and it would throw the boy into the fire or the water trying to kill him. The enemy wanted to steal, kill, and destroy the boy's speech. Could we be like that sometimes? Has God ever told you to speak to someone and you didn't because they looked unchurched? How long will you be muted? Has God ever told you to pray for a family member, a coworker, or someone you don't like, and because of your unforgiveness, you didn't do it? How long will you be muted? What is it that is stopping you from using your voice to be a witness for God? Here we see in this chapter that no one could help the boy, not his father, family, or anyone. Jesus seemed to get a little upset and was very blunt when he said, You unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. I wonder, does Jesus think that about us sometimes with our disobedience? Let's look at Moses in Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 14 in the NLT version. It reads, but Moses pleaded with the Lord, O oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me. I get tongue-tied, and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. <laughs> Isn't, don't we do that sometimes? Then the Lord became angry with Moses. Now let's break this down in today's language as if it is you or me talking with God. And we're going to break it down like this. Look here, Lord. I'm not good with words. Ain't never been before and ain't there now. I try to speak, but my words get twisted. Then the Lord tells you, who made your mouth? M-O-U-F. And I tell you when to speak. Now go on about your business and I'll tell you what to say. Then here we go again. Look here, Lord. Can't you just send someone else? Here we go, always trying to pass the buck, as they say. Verse 14 says, the Lord became angry with Moses. Isn't that how we are sometimes with our kids? We tell them to do something, and then they give us all kinds of excuses as to why they can't or shouldn't do it. And then we come back and say, I done took and told you to clean your room, and I'm not going to tell you again. Now, how many times has the pastor or another person in leadership asked you to pray, and you've said, I can't pray out loud. I'm not good at that. 
can you ask someone else? How long will you be muted? How many times has a leader in the church asked you to read the announcements or even a scripture and you've said, I don't like getting up in front of people and you decline. How long will you be muted? How many times has someone on the praise team asked you to lead a song and you've said, I heard someone say, ouch. <laughs> and you've said, I can't sing that well. I just make a joyful noise. And you say, ask someone else who sings better than me. How long will you be muted? We see that Moses went to God a few times to plead his case. But what stood out to me in, is the words that Moses said in verse 10. I never have been and I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me. Let's look at the last part of that sentence. Moses admitted, God, you've told me before to go and speak. And basically he's saying, I don't want to do it. Have we ever been like that with God? God has told us to do something, not once, not twice, but multiple times. And we have the audacity to say, God, I know what you told me to do several times, but I don't want to do it. Who are we to tell God what we are not going to do? Amen. What we do know is that God hasn't stopped speaking. So why do we put ourselves on mute? When you're on a conference call, you put your phone on mute so that the person speaking can't hear your background noise. Have we put God on mute because we have so much background noise in our lives? Can God hear you clearly or have you allowed the enemy to keep you silent to the point where you have convulsions or distractions. Do you know that some people have panic attacks when they are asked to speak? How long will you be muted? In order to hear from God, we have to have an intimate relationship with him. Have you put the mute button on God because of your fears, your insecurities, your lack of trust, and just being busy with life. Have you ever watched a movie on TV and you're getting into it and then a commercial comes on and you put the commercial on mute because you want to talk to someone in the room before the movie comes back on? What if God is the commercials in your life? Have we gotten to the point where we are looking for God to speak in those huge parts of our lives that we don't leave room for him to speak in the simple moments, those moments where he may want to whisper something to us. How long will you be muted? Did you know that God spoke to people in the Bible in some uncommon ways? He spoke to people in burning bushes, thunder, and vivid dreams. Do you expect God to tell you to speak in a loud way? What if God tells you to whisper an encouraging word in someone's ear and it's something that they need and you don't do it because you don't feel that it's not eloquent enough? How long will you be muted? Now, there are times when we do need to be silent because some believers may talk way too much about nothing. The Bible says, let everything be done in decency and in order. The power of our words can be used to build up or to tear down. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7 tells us that there is a time to keep silent and a time to speak. But when? How do you know when to speak or keep silent? We have to be able to discern the difference between knowing when to speak or when to be silent 
by seeking the Lord through prayer and asking the Holy Spirit for his wisdom and discernment. If fear is keeping us from sharing the gospel with others, this too is an example of our silence because it is not being helpful. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, in the NLT version says, For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Are you telling anyone about the good news of the gospel? Why not? How long will you be muted? The Lord said to Paul in Acts chapter 18, verse 9, Don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. How long will you be muted? We must obey the call to tell everyone about Jesus in the proper setting and time. So how are we to speak? Colossians chapter 4, verse 6 in the easy version says, When you speak to people, always speak kind words. Say things that will help them. Then when someone asks you a question, you will know how to reply. When you speak, are you speaking kind words and saying things to help people? You do know that words have power. I once heard a pastor say, you are either cremating or creating your world with your words. We must remember that it is our duty to be a representative of Christ and that it is in his word and in deed as well. It is mandatory that we seek the Lord daily and study what his word says so that we're prepared to walk boldly in knowledge and in truth. We should always remember Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 through 37 in the NLT version reads, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. My God, that is powerful. So what should you speak? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 tells us that we should be speaking the truth in love. I repeat, we should be speaking the truth in love. Are you speaking in love and are you speaking the truth? I ask you again, how long will you be muted? If you go down further in the fourth chapter of Ephesians and look at verse 25, in the Amplified Version, it makes it clear as day and can't get no clearer than this. And it says, therefore, rejecting all falsehood, whether lying, defrauding, telling half-truths, spreading rumors, any such as these speak truth, each one with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one another, and we are all parts of the body of Christ. Are you speaking truth to your brother or sister in the body of Christ? How long will you be muted? Are you too timid to speak? The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, and the NLT version reads, Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike, which means everyone. My question to you again is, how long will you be muted? In the story of the woman at the well, in John chapter 4, verses 28 through 30, the NLT version reads, The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came from the village to see him. The woman was so excited about her encounter with Jesus that she ran to the village and she told 
everyone. Are you telling everyone about Jesus and what he has done for you? How long will you be muted? The Bible says, to much whom is given, much is required. We as believers have been given much. So why shouldn't we be like the song that says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. How long will you be muted? We are truly living in the last days and God is doing a new thing. In Acts chapter two, verse 17, it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, say of God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse one, it says, cry loud and spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. And I leave the question with you tonight before I take my seat. How long will you be muted? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the word. I pray that the word was received. And I thank you, Lord, on tonight that I pray that this word has blessed someone and that we will no longer be muted and that we will rise up and use our voices to bring souls to Christ. I pray that as we leave this place and never from God's presence, that God will continue to protect us and keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger and bring us back safely until we meet again in Jesus' name. How long?